All right, we're going over a lab called measuring temperature. And I have asked the class to actually stick their finger in each one of these containers, which one container has ice water, the other one has warm water, and the other one has what I think would be about room temperature water. Now, I'm going to actually measure the temperature of that with a bead type instrument now. And we're going to see what each one of them measures. Now, this is a very small temperature measuring device, so it does not have a whole lot of mass that has to take time to change. So when we bring it into there, we'll see a quick response. I have this ice water measuring approximately 36 to 37 degrees, depending on whether it's against the ice cube or not. What did y'all come up with? About 42. About 42? 32. About 32? Well, I with uh, uh, 33. Okay. All right. In the hopes that it was. Okay. Then in the warm water, I'm measuring 102 degrees. And, and that's just because you can't. Not the hot one. That's the warm one. This, this is the hot water. The hot one. Yeah. Okay, I was, you know, huh. I like 80. Okay, I was like 80 ish. I put okay. 82. Okay. And last but not least, the one that's about room temperature was well, actually a little above room temperature. It's actually measuring 78 degrees. Now, here's the funny thing. Did y'all come up about that with that? that 70. Okay. About 60. Our bodies are great for protecting us against extreme colds or extreme heats. I also have asked the class to do this number. Stick their finger in either the cold or hot and then go immediately to the, warm that, the, the one that was warm or the opposite temperature. And you get a sensation that doesn't really feel exactly right because it may feel extremely colder or extremely warmer. It's our body's protection system. Our bodies are great for that, but for making measurements and, and determining temperatures, you must have the proper instrumentation. I have seen people go out and say, I felt to that line and it felt a little cool, or it felt a little warm, or it was hot. That doesn't mean anything. The only way that we're really going to know what the temperature of something is, is to use a measurement, uh, an instrument to measurement, such as this, or on a pipe, one may actually use a device made for measuring pipes. You can see that this will actually fit around the pipe. See it going around my little finger says I'm still alive as in Star Trek it would have said Jim he's alive but <laughs> so much for that. And there is another instrument that is quite popular in our field but it is misused. This is the infrared. The infrared we see the little dot but that's not what it's measuring. This actually measures the infrared that is being set are, are transmitted from the object. It doesn't send a single out and reflect back like a lot of folks think it does. It's actually just measuring the infrared that comes. The dot's just a pointer. Okay. Now, one of the problems with this is it's also going to measure what's in the background. And another problem, and if you can, see if you can turn the camera towards us. Here's a shiny object. Okay. If I put this next to the shiny object there, I am going to get a temperature of not that shiny object, but what may actually be reflected from that object. In fact, I'm going to try to do it this way. Let's see if I can make it happen. Take the hold off. It's saying it's 71 degrees. But if I throw my hand over here, now I am measuring 85. Hmm. There's no way that that cover plate is 85 degrees. It is measuring the infrared that is bouncing off that cover plate and bouncing back into the instrument. What I wanted to show is these are great for doing something like this, where we measure the temperature of the register, it says it's 64 degrees, but they are terrible for trying to measure a line temperature, and they can get be misused. Okay, that's going to conclude the part of the uh, the uh, demo for measuring temperatures. We'll now move on to something else. Thank you. All right, we're going to be looking at pressure temperature slash weight relations. And what I want to show you today is that the weight or the amount of refrigerant 
in a container or a system does not tell you what the pressure is going to be. The pressure does not tell you how much refrigerant's in it. I've had people ask me, how can I tell how much this thing holds? You don't do it that way. We cannot tell from the pressure alone. If I take this drum of refrigerant right here, which is 134, and I measure this drum of refrigerant, it tells me that the complete drum is measuring 35 point, no, 35 pounds, 10.3 ounces. That's what the gauge is attached. If I lay the gauges to the side, I find out that it weighs 33.6 ounces. Now my pressure in this particular drum is about 78 pounds of pressure. Now the temperature may not have stabilized, but if we look at our temperature pressure chart, I'm showing 72 degrees, 72, 73 degrees. It should actually read somewhere more in the neighborhood of around uh, 74 pounds of pressure. We may have a little bit of gauge error here or some kind of error, but that's not what I'm actually concerned about right now. What I'm concerned about, does my pressure tell me how much this thing weighs? The answer is no, because watch what happens when I take another drum of refrigerant. The refrigerant does have to be in the saturated state, meaning that there is liquid and vapor present. This drum weighs, let me go ahead and attach the hose as I had the other one so that we're getting a more of an accurate weight. This drum weighs 19 pounds and 10 and a half ounces. When I bring my temperature, I mean my pressure onto my gauge, I'm showing that I'm reading approximately the same as I did the other one. So it's obvious I cannot tell how much weight from pressure alone. Now what happens if I cool it off? Well what's going to happen to my pressure? If I cool this drum off, pressure is going to go down. My pressure should go down. If I heat the drum up, the pressure should go up. To show that, I have a bucket of ice water. You can hear the ice, and I have this valve open. I'm currently that quick. I'm reading 75, dropping fast. In fact, don't know if you can see that or not. Zoom it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Dropping really fast. Dropping really, really fast. Okay, do y'all remember how much this drum weighed? 19. It was roughly 20 pounds. I don't remember exactly. 20.10 ounces, I think. Okay. I've already dropped all the way down to, and still dropping, 55 pounds of pressure approaching. Okay. Now, it's obvious that it's much colder than it was. I'm going to reweigh it and see if my weight has changed. It was 19.13 or something right at 20. I'm right there at the same place. The weight has not changed, okay? You know, what has changed is only the temperature. In fact, you can actually see the temperature beginning to rise again from the, the heat that's in the room, okay? It's, and you can see that my weight is staying steady. Okay? So the temperature, pressure, weight relation, don't get them confused. I change the pressure, I don't change the weight. I change temperature, I change the pressure. Temperature and pressure are directly related. Weight is not related to that, okay?